Hi friends, I'm Katie. Welcome to my channel, Life Between Words, if this is your first time here. We are into the month of October, and October is one of my favorite months because I love Halloween. My birthday is the day after Halloween, and so growing up, I had the best birthday parties, partly because I had the best mom who gave me the best birthday parties. One year we had a haunted house at my birthday party and we like made tunnels down the stairs. Another year all of my friends dressed up like black cats. Another year we all sat around in a circle and listened to a telling of the Headless Horseman and my mom had rigged this amazing costume and she put my dad in it and he went into our backyard and he weaved back and forth in the backyard getting closer and closer to the house until one of my friends noticed that the Headless Horseman was in our backyard and then everyone screamed and ran around and it was always just so much fun. Like, so much fun. So I love this time of year apart from just the colorful trees. Oh, and then on my anniversary is also in October, so October is just a wonderful month all the way around. Technically my birthday is in November because it's November 1st, but because it's the day after Halloween, I always sort of just lump it in with October. Anyway, that's all to say, it's time for me to tell you what books I plan to read this month. I'm going to preface this by saying this is a heavily spooky reading month for me. Thriller, mystery, horror. I'm not much of a horror reader in general, but I thought I'd dip my toes in this year, and so let's just start out with the chunker, and potentially the scariest, I guess we'll see. I am reading It by Stephen King with a group of booktubers, and I'm really glad to be reading it with them because if I get too freaked out, I have other people to talk to about it. It is kind of an iconic tale for my generation. The made-for-TV movie with Tim Curry, who was the concierge in Home Alone 2, for those of you who don't recognize that name, came out when I was really too little to watch it, but they played it over and over on TV. I actually never saw it because my mom was pretty careful, my, my parents were pretty careful about what I watched, but I know so many people my age who watched this movie way before they should have, way before they were old enough, and so they're terrified of clowns because this is about a scary clown, I think. I'm really not too far into it yet. I have started it, but I'm only on page 122, and I gotta say, Stephen King, master storyteller. I haven't read too much by him, but I did read The Stand a couple years ago and really, really enjoyed it, and I might even like it. Better. I guess we'll see. Basically this book is about a scary clown, or at least a monster that takes the form of a scary clown. I really don't know yet, but terrorizes this little town in Maine, which I know Stephen King loves to set his books on the East Coast. It alternates between the perspectives of a group of children and then adults in the 1950s and then the 1980s who are trying to fight this scary clown. You guys, that is so big. This is possibly the biggest book I will have ever read in my life. And his other book, The Stand, that I read was also one of the biggest books that I've read in my life. I mean, they're up there with Dickens. They're huge. I am also reading another huge book, and this is the only book on my TBR that is not a scary book, or not a thriller at least, and that is Assassin's Quest. This is the third book in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb, which is part of her greater Elderlings world. See, like, there's multiple series in this world. So this is the final chapter on this phase of Fitz's life. I am loving it so far. I know that this gets not the best reviews out of this trilogy, and I think it's because after a while the pace really slows down. But right now it is clipping along and I'm I'm reading this with Julie from A Girl in a Book and we have planned to read all of Robin Hobb's books together so there you go yeah so far so good but I'll let you know at the end of the month so those are the two biggest books I mean those are both one is over a thousand pages one is almost a thousand pages so if I were just reading those books I would still say that October would be an accomplished month but like a crazy person I have more to read I also plan to buddy read The Ruins by Scott Smith. Sorry, I forgot his name. This is another horror novel. It's about two couples who go to Mexico on vacation, find themselves at some sort of spot in the jungle, at a, a ruins, the ruins, 
and there's malicious living plant that terrorizes them, which doesn't sound scary, but this is on a lot of people's most scary book lists. I'm reading it with Julie from A Girl in a Book again, and Stephanie from That's What She Read. Did I already say that? And I'm looking forward to reading this with them and continuing on with my scary books for the month. I also would really like to take part in the Spookathon, which is a readathon hosted by Books and Lala, and I can't remember the channel names of the other two ladies, but I'll link them down below. Um, I follow all of them. I just can't remember their channel names because sometimes I'm really bad at that. I'm so sorry. I have not entirely planned out my TBR for that, but I know that one of the books that I want to read is Intensity by Dean Koontz and probably an Agatha Christie book. And other than that, I'm not sure yet. But this one is long enough that it's possible I only get through this one for that week. So I guess we'll see. Hi, Peaches. Did you come to say hi? Can you say hi to the camera? Say meow. Say meow. You just want love all the time. And if, like a crazy person, I get through all those books, I would like to try two others. One is The Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith, J.K. Rowling. I have read the first two in this mystery series. I have not read the third yet, and I've been wanting to read this for ages, and this seemed like a good month to pick it up, but I just don't know if I'm going to have time. I probably won't, so this is going to get pushed off again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cormoran Strike. And then another horror novel that I'd like to try is The Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. Josh Mallerman. Peaches, come on. Just sit down. Yeah, just like that. Oh, look at that. See, that's sweet. That's sweet. That's much better than your butt in my face. This is a shorter book, so I could potentially read this during the readathon. I'm pretty sure this is about a woman who is living in our world, but in a time in which there has been some sort of epidemic. It's like maybe post-apocalyptic, but or maybe just a world of horror. There's something outside, and if you see it, it makes you go crazy. So if you go outside, you have to keep your eyes closed. And anyway, she's living in this abandoned house with two children, at least one of which is her own, and something forces her to have to leave the house and seek shelter somewhere else. So she takes these two kids out into this very scary world and has to survive and get to where they're going blindfolded, basically. That's a terrible synopsis. So those are the books that I plan to read in the spooky month of October. I don't think I will get to them all. I think I will probably get to very few of them, but a girl can dream, right? A girl can dream. I hope that you are having a wonderful October, whether you are reading spooky books or not, or whether you are going apple picking. I don't know, that's a good thing to do in October. Whether you are going to a corn maze, another good thing. Pumpkin patch, carving pumpkins, um, what else is there to do in October? Drink apple cider? I love apple cider. There's lots to do in October. I hope that you're enjoying it all. If you went trick-or-treating when you were a little kid, tell me your favorite Halloween costume growing up. I'd love to know that. And I will see you soon for another video. Bye! We always made our own costumes. My favorite costume might have been Tinkerbell. We spray painted some little white kids shoes green and put a cotton ball on the ends of them and my mom made wings out of a hanger and some nylons and I had my little wispy blonde hair up in a top knot and anyway that might have been one of my favorites.